Hello, my name is Robert Haddad and today I'd like to present on the topic of the secret rapture. Why am I interested in the secret rapture as a Catholic? Uh, many years ago, over 40 years ago in fact, I was uh, associated with people who were of the Baptist tradition and evangelical Anglicans. And particularly the Baptists were very interested in promoting this idea of uh, secret rapture. It was the late 1970s and early 80s, and there was much turmoil in the world at the time. Uh, America was in crisis during the Carter administration. The Soviet Union was on the ascendancy. There was uh, the Iran hostage crisis. There was the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. There was the Iran-Iraq war. Uh, there was the Olympic boycott. There was decline in the United States after the Vietnam War, etc. So there was much speculation about end times. And I came under the influence of Baptists here in Sydney, Australia, after the Billy Graham crusade. And I had a friend named Stephen, a very good man, very Christian, very biblically based. And from time to time, he would promote this idea of secret rapture. And according to him, the secret rapture was going to be happening very soon. In fact, uh, not many years after 1981. And he would actually mention on one occasion the year 1988. And that was because they were believing that the rapture would occur or the second coming of Christ would occur about a generation after the foundation of the State of Israel. So the State of Israel is founded in 1948. A biblical generation is 40 years so that Christ was going to come uh, re return in glory around 1988. But the rapture, the secret rapture, would occur seven years prior, so around 1981. And I remember very well as a senior high school student at that time thinking, well, why should I study? Why should I go to university? It's the end times, the rapture, tribulation, antichrist, second coming, final judgment, etc., etc. Uh, and so... Uh, I was just trying to grapple with these things, wondering if it's true or not. Uh, I'm a Catholic, at least nominally I was. Should Catholics believe in secret rapture? Should Catholics believe in any type of rapture? Uh, we certainly believe that Jesus will come again, a second coming, etc. So what was I to think about all of this? Anyway, that's the background as to why I became interested in the concept of secret rapture. And now, 40 years later, I'm prepared to uh, give an exposition as to why I believe the secret rapture concept is not scriptural. But there is a rapture, a public rapture, that we as Catholics and all Christians, all Bible believers, should adhere to. And I'll come to that in the conclusion. So what is the secret rapture as believed by modern day evangelicals, Baptists, Pentecostals, etc.? Uh, the rapture from most of these people is the idea that Jesus Christ will soon return secretly and invisibly to snatch away true Christians and innocent children, whether living or dead, and take them to heaven before the appearance of the Antichrist and the period of the Great Tribulation. Once all true Christians have disappeared, the Antichrist will be free to take control of the world and impose his reign of terror. Of the people remaining on earth during this terrible time, only those who resist the Antichrist and die as martyrs for Jesus will ultimately be saved. After seven years of tribulation, Jesus will return yet again, this time visibly and in glory, to destroy the Antichrist and his followers and institute his thousand-year public reign, known as the Millennium. Belief in a secret rapture has become increasingly popular in recent times. My own experience, as I outlined earlier, related to the 1970s and early 80s. But since then, 
Uh, it has remained very popular through the publication of works such as The Late Great Planet Earth by Hal Lindsey, which came out actually in 1969, and the Left Behind series by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins, published from 1995 to 2001. And of course, around that period, we had the millennium, we had the 9-11 attacks on America, and in these current times, 2020, 2021, we've got many troubles around the world, uh, the decline of the United States again, the moral decline of the West, the crisis in the church, uh, the rise of uh, new atheism, militant atheism, woke culture, cancel culture, have many people afraid about our present circumstances and are focusing people's attention again on end times issues. Where did secret rapture doctrine originate? Basically, we can trace it to Puritan preachers in the, in the, earlier, the early America, uh, colonial America, actually late 17th century, early 18th century, had the Puritan preachers increase and Cotton Mather, who preached a rudimentary form of this belief, as I said, during that period. There was also the Baptist pastor Morgan Edwards, who in 1788 published an essay promoting the idea that Christians will be snatched away up into heaven three and a half years before Jesus' final return. Around 1830, we have a member of the British Plymouth Brethren uh, sect by the name of John Nelson Darby, who heavily promoted this concept of secret rapture. And there were also several popular evangelical Protestant leaders who came under Darby's influence, uh, the most famous being Dwight L. Moody. One of Moody's friends, Cyrus L. I. Schofield, in, in 1909, published his own commentary on the King James Bible, known popularly, popularly as the Schofield Reference Bible. And this Bible promoted very heavily in the footnotes the concept of secret rapture. We also have a Pentecostal figure named Edward Irving, who in the late 19th century and early 20th century founded the Catholic Apostolic Church a forerunner of modern-day uh, Pentecostalism, and he likewise promoted very strongly the concept of secret rapture. For these gentlemen that I've just outlined very briefly, what was the main biblical basis for belief in a secret rapture? Essentially, people who believe in the secret rapture point firstly to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 15 to 17, which I'll now read out in full. Quote, For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with the cry of a command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Close quote. The words caught up in the above verse originally read rapiamer in, in the Latin Vulgate, from which rapture is derived. In the original Greek, the relevant word is apagesamitha, meaning shall be seized. The meaning is nevertheless the same. Christ will one day return and his followers, living and dead, will be lifted up to meet him in the air. However, does 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 17 really speak of a secret rapture? Quite the opposite. This verse rather describes an awesome public event, one involving the descent of Jesus amidst 
quote, a cry of command with the archangel's call and with the sound of the trumpet of God. There's nothing secret about cries, calls and trumpets. The public nature of Jesus' second coming is reinforced by other verses of Scripture, including Matthew 24, 30 and Revelation 1, 7. Let's look at these quotes. Matthew 24, 30. Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Close quote. Revelation 1 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, every one who pierced him, and all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, Amen. Close quote. The second problem with secret rapture doctrine is its belief in two second comings of Jesus. The first to secretly snatch away the true Christians. The second in glory to defeat the Antichrist. Yet the Bible consistently speaks of only one second coming of Jesus. For example, 1 Thessalonians 4.15 cited already says the coming, not a coming of Jesus. The third problem with secret rapture doctrine is that nowhere in 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 to 17 does it say that Jesus will descend and then do a U-turn back into heaven. Rather, Jesus will return and establish his kingdom, which will descend like a bride, adorned for her wedding and we read in revelation 21 2 about this wedding feast of the lamb quote and i saw the holy city new jerusalem coming down out of heaven from god prepared as a bride adorned for her husband close quote the fourth problem with secret rapture doctrine is the assertion that true Christians will be spared the great tribulation and all its attendant sufferings. Yet Matthew 24, 21 to 22 indicates otherwise, quote, for then there will be a great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be. And if those days had not been shortened, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Close quote. Why would the days of misery be shortened for the sake of the elect? Unless the elect were still on earth during the Great Tribulation. The fifth problem with secret rapture doctrine is that it asserts that Jesus will secretly come before the appearance of the Antichrist. While 2 Thessalonians 2 verses 3 to 4 and 8 is clear that Jesus' one and only return will occur after the Antichrist's appearance and reign. Quote, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the son of lawlessness is revealed. The son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship, so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. And then the lawless one will be revealed and the Lord Jesus will slay him with the breath of his mouth and destroy him by his appearing and his coming, close quote. The sixth problem with secret rapture doctrine is the belief that the righteous dead are raised to meet Jesus at the time of his secret second coming. Afterwards, there will be seven years of the Antichrist's reign before Jesus' final coming in glory. Yet we know from John chapter 6, verse 54, 
that the dead will only be raised on the last day. Quote, He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Close quote. The seventh problem with secret rapture doctrine lies in the verse of scripture used as the basis for unbelievers being left behind. Namely, Matthew 24, verses 37 to 41, quote, As were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they did not know until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field. One is taken and one is left. Two women will be grinding at the mill. One is taken and one is left. Close quote. This verse tells us that in the days of Noah, the unrighteous were swept away, while the righteous were left behind. This is the opposite of what secret rapture doctrine says will happen when Jesus returns secretly. If the end times are meant to be similar to the days of Noah, then what Matthew 24 verses 37 to 41 means is that the unrighteous will be taken by death, presumably to damnation, and that the righteous will be left behind to be raptured when Jesus returns in public glory. The eighth problem with secret rapture doctrine is its reliance on the words twinkling of an eye in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 52 in support of a secret rapture. The full text of 1 Corinthians 15 50 to 52 reads as follows, quote, Lo, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but, we'll, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we shall be changed. Close quote. St. Paul's purpose in this passage was to teach the Corinthians how Christians will be mysteriously and instantaneously glorified in their bodies at the return of Jesus. Not that they will be secretly snatched off the earth prior to the tribulation. At the sound of, quote, the last trumpet, both the living and the dead faithful in Christ will be transformed. The sounding of this trumpet is evidence enough that St. Paul is speaking of a public event. This is the same last trumpet heralding the public second coming of Jesus in Matthew 24, 31. The final problem with secret uh, rapture doctrine is the fact that none of the leaders of the Protestant Reformation, Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, Knox, etc., show any evidence in their writings of belief in a secret second coming to steal away the elect. Rather, with the Catholic Church, they viewed 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 15 to 17, etc., as referring to the parousia, or Christ's public second coming at the end of the world to judge the living and the dead. There will be a rapture. However, it will occur when Jesus makes his one and only second coming in power and glory at the end of the world to judge the living and the dead. The righteous will be caught up together to meet Jesus as he approaches the world in triumph. They will be joined by the angels and the saints who have been reigning with Christ in heaven. See Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Together, all the righteous will welcome the King of glory as he approaches to consummate all things. Amen. Thank you and God bless.